Hey, today I'm going to be recapping episodes 16 through 18 of Eternal Love. Li Jing wakes up to discover he's been betrayed by Xuan Yu and Yan Zhe. Yan Zhe and Scarlet have stolen Li Yuan and there's no trace of them. Ye Hua finally gets some time to himself and makes his way down to the mortal realm where Susu has been waiting for more than six months. He apologizes, saying he had something to take care of and she just accepts that. A few months later, Ye Hua tells her he will be leaving again for a year or two, and again she just takes that in stride. Okay, obviously she's hurt and he's apologetic, but really? Two years with no explanation? That's definitely grounds for divorce in my book. Though I guess she doesn't have many other options. He gives her a small mirror that will allow them to communicate. Ye Hua reveals to Lian Song that he plans to fake his death so he can be with Su Su full time. Ye Hua and Su Jin make great diplomats and successfully restore relations with the various tribes, meaning that they will have their back if, well, when, war starts with the mermaid clan. Honestly, I made this as a placeholder, but it makes me laugh every time I see it, so I'm keeping it. The reason things are so tense in the Changxi is because the Changxi king sucks at being a leader. There are rumors that he intends to marry one of his daughters off to the mermaid clan, and that he's under their thumb. One of the generals suggests that they get Die Feng, Mo Yan's disciple and son of the West Sea King, to take his place after the war. Ye Hua and Su Su chat through the mirror, and Su Su brings up having a child to keep her company. I like Su Su, but I don't know if I trust her as a single mother, considering how easily she gets lost and the fact that she has started a fire trying to cook. Anyway, Ye Hua thinks it's a fine idea. Ye Hua gets the Heavenly Lord's permission to go to the Changxi undercover and scope out the situation. The matchmaker crew is finally successful, getting Feng Zhou drunk on fruit and endearing her to Di Jin. He carries her home so she can sober up. When she wakes up, she's so happy that she accidentally reveals that Bai Chen is Xian. Ye Hua is back all of a sudden, wreaking emotional havoc on poor Su Su. That night, she finally stands up for herself, insisting that he take her with him this time. They get ready to go, and Ye Hua returns the fan to her. They're walking together when they're attacked by some mermaid clan guys, and Ye Hua is badly outnumbered until who should appear but Die Feng and his crew. Also, when I first heard mermaids, I was thinking Aquaman. These guys though. Mm, yeah. Die Feng almost mistakes them for Xian and Mo Yan, but of course that can't be right because Su Su is a girl. <laughs> Ye Hua reveals his identity and his reason for coming to Die Feng. They head to the Changxi together. Yan Zhe has arranged for Li Yuan to go into hiding, which of course he was never going to agree to. Come on, Yanja, look at this guy. Does he seem like a hide quietly sort of guy? Li Yuan plans to go to the mermaid clan and join them in fighting the celestial tribe and the ghost tribe. He also has Scarlet kill Yanja's loyal bodyguards to make sure things stay top secret. That's the face of someone who's realizing what an idiot she's been. Okay, not an idiot, but very naive. In the immortal world, there are four major seas with their own rulers. The East Sea, which we haven't seen much of. The North Sea, which Sang Ji has been in charge of since his big demotion. The West Sea, where Dia Feng's father is king, and finally, the Changxi. The Changxi king welcomes all of them, and Ye Hua takes Su Su to see the nearby Peach Blossom Woods. Dia Feng introduces Ye Hua to people as the mortal man, are you ready for this? Hua Ye. Back at the Fox Tribe, long time no see, the clan is freaking out about not being able to find Bai Chen, especially since the Heavenly Lord wants to move up the wedding date. They plan to put out an official statement that Bai Chen is still recovering from her battle with Qing Chang, the old ghost lord. Dia Feng and Ye Hua go to visit the troops that have been fighting the mermaid clan. The Changxi army has been at war with the mermaids for years, and as the Changxi is an annexed territory and far away from the heavenly realm, they rarely receive reinforcements. The people of Changxi are suffering and feel unheard, while the Changxi king is trying to curry favor with the mermaid king by giving him his daughter. Then finally, some good news. Su Su is pregnant. With a child on the way, it is no longer safe for her to stay, but Ye Hua promises this will be the last time he leaves her alone. Li Yuan finally meets with the Mermaid King, expecting to be put in charge of some troops, but without the backing of his father and his mother being long dead, he is laughed out. The Mermaid King sends his son to pick up the new wife the Changxi King is offering him. At the banquet, it's clear to see that all the rumors are true. Once he has seen enough, Ye Hua reveals himself as the Heavenly Tribe's crown prince. Ye Hua berates the Changxi King in front of everyone for his lack of morals, even stooping so low as to sell his own daughter out. To prove his loyalty, the Changxi King has the Mermaid King's son killed. The Mermaid King receives his son's head and resolves to kill them all. Ye Hua takes Su Su back to Junji Mountain, planning to fake his death during the battle and return in time to meet the baby, though he doesn't tell her all the details. He puts up a spell that should keep her hidden as long as she doesn't leave the area. Su Jin shows up at the battle site for some reason. Ye Hua plans to send the troops out as soon as possible, pretending it's so that they can take the Mermaid Clan by surprise. Really, it's so he can get back to Susu. And just like that, the battle is on. Till next time, thanks for watching.